Is your banana too curvy? Is your tea bag harboring a hidden disease? Is your neighbour planning on eating your pet pony? Don't worry, the EU has got a regulation for everything. But according to human rights organisations, it's failed miserably to regulate its own behaviour. And it all started with an apparently innocent bid to boost security in Eritrea. We're launching 20 million euro programme to rebuild the roads connecting both countries. This will boost trade, consolidate stability and have clear benefits for the citizens of both countries through the creation of sustainable growth and jobs. So far, so good. Unless, of course, you're the one put to work on this great collaboration, because the chances are you're a forced conscript. The African nation has compulsory national service that used to last for 18 months, but now sees people trapped in for over 20 years. It's a practice that's been likened by human rights organizations, the UN and the European Parliament, to mass enslavement. Former conscripts compared national service to modern-day slavery, saying they suffered torture and other ill-treatment, arbitrary arrest and lack basic sanitation and hygiene. Former conscripts recall working 72-hour weeks in harsh conditions with no food and pay equivalent to $17 a month. It's one of the main reasons Eritrea is called the world's fastest emptying country as young men continue their mass exodus. But despite knowing conscripts were being used and generally the delicate situation in a country that was locked in a guerrilla war for three decades, the EU says that really it had no idea that untoward things were going on. The EU does not pay for labour under this project. The project only covers the procurement of material and equipment to support the rehabilitation of roads. In fact, the EU doesn't even have an office in Eritrea to monitor this ongoing project. Instead, it relies on local authorities. The agency is not monitoring the implementation of the project. The project is carried out by the government and progress is monitored by the Ministry of Public Works. The EU is entrusting its project to an arm of a government which is internationally slammed as one of the world's worst human rights abusers, which the UN describes as authoritarian and repressive, and which lived under UN sanctions for nine years. It's almost as if the EU has something at stake here, other than creating a great road, of course, like stemming a tide of migrants, for example, because 2016 saw 30,000 Eritreans apply for asylum in the bloc. So yes, this EU project will lift the local economy and bring peace, but crucially it will create jobs and that will keep Eritreans in their homeland and not crossing on boats to European shores. The EU is indirectly supporting this project by um, procuring material to help build the road. The problem is, is that what they need to make sure is that any support going to Eritrea is not further cementing this incredibly repressive system. And Eritrea is a land, by the way, which happens to be one of the most strategic areas in the world. Its coast runs along the Red Sea, which is a key link between Europe and Asia. It's also an ideal access point to emerging African markets with low labour costs. And it's a natural resource gold mine with gas, gold, copper, oil, zinc, you name it, Eritrea's got it. Eritrea is obviously placed in a very strategic location along the Red Sea. Um, it is the access to the sea for Ethiopia. From the European point of view, it is obviously one of the countries which many asylum seekers here in Europe are coming from. And they're coming and they're fleeing because of the human rights situation. So it seems that when you've got something to gain, it's easier to be tougher on curved bananas than your own employment law.